Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achin. I am privileged and honored once again to have Mr. Vikram Sood with me, who is going to. I mean, firstly, I don't think I'll be able to do justice to a person who is already known to everybody. And as a matter of fact, his knowledge and his uh, articulation of various issues in the world has been something that has attracted me to sir. Uh, firstly, sir, Namaskar. Thank you so much for coming in once again, taking Good out your right. time. Pleasure to talk to you. Let's open this conversation, sir. I want to talk about the tango between America, China, and India. Firstly, sir, does China look at us in a bilateral relation, or does it look at us through the eye of US? I think it looks at us at two levels. It 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 wants to uh, treat us bilaterally, but that we are now, quote unquote, lackeys of the Americans. So, they see us, they don't think that the Americans will come to our assistance should China do something in India. Because the American reputation being what it is, they're going to say, it's your problem, you handle it. India-China relations, India-US relationship, is a different kind of relationship and we will not be expecting any support should the Chinese attack us tomorrow. But I don't think the Chinese will do that either. It's not in their interest because it's not 1962 and if they get a bloody nose at this time, which surely would happen, then they're, it's a loss of face for them. Correct. You know, loss of face in China is a terrible thing to so they won't do that. They will. Uh, they will wait for us. They have long memories. They will keep nibbling at us. Arunachal me naksha bana diye, naam badal diye. Like, then we can play the same game as some some enterprising people are doing it, like yourself. So it's good that we play that game. Maybe we need their 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 uh, market, or they need our resources, and with with the overcapacity, they want to desperately increase their export. Are we going to handle it? Are we going to let it happen? Let them dump uh, ruddy mall or cheap stuff here and hurt our economies? We can't let that happen either. The Chinese-US relationship, I, th I think they, they feel that they can handle India, it's okay. As long as we don't go beyond a point, Indians are not going to do anything, which is also sensible, we're not going to start anything with them. And this thing of not letting you become a member of the Security Council, or putting obstacles in your way, Continuing with the uh, CPEC and so on, so for that will continue. Needle you, prefer to needle you through Pakistan if they can. Now Pakistan's ability to do that is also considerably reduced. They have to look after themselves first. Our our main thing is how does the China-US relationship evolve? And where does it place us vis-a-vis -vis India, vis-a-vis -vis China and vis-a-vis -vis US? Right. I was reading this huge uh, piece in the Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. published today. It's about six, seven pages of A4. And uh, they talk about everything, about the future, the strategies, etc., etc. They don't talk about India. The, India is not a factor in the China-US relations. It's only about the Pacific, Taiwan, etc. Economics. And now I think they are making a pitch. The title is No Substitute for Victory. Hmm. America's competition with China must be won, not managed. 
is by Matt Pottinger and Mike Callagher hmm. in the Foreign Affairs of April 10th. It's a May-June edition. Okay. Here, it says, talking about, talking about dealing with China with perfect candor, he says that it also means rapidly increasing in US defense capabilities to achieve unmistakable, unmistakable qualitative advantages over Beijing. It means severing China's access to Western technology and frustrating mm -hmm. Xi Jinping's efforts to convert his country's wealth into military power. And it means intensive diplomacy with Beijing only from a position of American strength, as perceived by both Beijing and Washington. Now, I think it's a crazy kind of an argument. How, how, how do you ensure that all this thing can be done? And that is what will make you safe. Hmm? He goes on and on and on, and I've commented on it also and said that this is uh, on Twitter. Said that they have something the bureau and uh, it's you know calling the call to the ramparts. This take on China. That is there. This is the I would think the the neocon kind of uh, hmm. writing. The ultra right China haters. They want an information war of, of tremendous proportion. Which they're doing already, and not China is not doing it. So the Chinese and so they want to rearm, reduce, and re and recruit their forces. And what they say that what China wants from the West is that West should remain silent while they do mm. what they want. What they want. It's a, it's a, peculiar kind of an article, but it gives you a glimpse of what a certain section of the society, that of the strategic uh, community is thinking. I think we are, we are currently, you can't just take US China just by itself. There are so many outward links coming out and inward mm -hmm. things coming into it. So we are in an age of, uh, I call it the age of impl imploding empires. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I do believe the United States cannot assert the way it used to assert in the past. I'll come to that later. Ambitious empires. Then ex Islamic radical, growing Islamic radicalism, exploding technology and a rising India. Hmm. So this is the world we are living in. And how are we going to manage ourselves? Not just with US and China, but otherwise. Now China has access to oil and gas from Iran, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Kazakhstan, wherever. It can pay in yuan. It has Europe at its mercy today, literally. The yes, Europeans sir. are very keen to do let the Chinese do something for us. Let's trade with them. And they are they're going to benefit from the Ukraine war. Russia will become closer to them or maybe dependent on them. And the Americans are not going to be able to sustain this battle in, in the Ukraine for much longer. Mm. Mm. Although they'll keep on saying that and they are the ones who, who, who don't want dialogue. They want the Ukrainians to keep dying. You know what uh, David Cameron said the other day on TV? I'll just read it out to you. He said words to the effect that, um, where was it? Uh, or he was talking from some conference that it has been a great thing for America that they reduced Russian military power 
for the last so many years without a single American being killed. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You saw that? No, it's a it's lot of no the Ukrainians or the Europeans, yeah. nothing. And this is in the British is talking. Mm-hmm. It's not even uh, a German or a or a Frenchman or even a, a Ukrainian talking. So, how how can you? This is this is how it is being evolving in in the, in the system. So I think if if ever U.S. is pushed to a corner in, in this conflict uh, in in Ukraine, they'll push for a uh, they might sue for peace. Because there is no alternative left, but camouflage tells me I don't think the Russians will accept it. They would want mm-hmm. the Americans to come and talk to them, and uh, we know that the Chinese are surrounding us in many ways. Although Sitway is a big bonus for us recently, and uh, they have. For us to compete with China, with their massive presence in Africa, Latin America, they have a, you know, if you, if you have a pay, base in Djibouti, mm-hmm. and you have one in uh, Bwada, and you get closer to the Maldives, I think the Arabian Sea is going to become dicey for us. Yeah. Unless we are able to counter it somehow. Maybe just a little base in Lakshadweep may not do. You want to have Reunion or you want to have uh, um, Mauritius on your side. Assumption. Yeah. So, uh, where was I? I think I got, I started rambling. No, no, this is very relevant, sir. I May I just add something so that you can actually continue on this? I want you to kind of help us understand one little thing, sir. Uh, the US-China competition has come to a point today where the understanding that the competition is now getting serious is there. And you see these wheeled threats coming across where Xi Jinping comes out and says Taiwan is non-negotiable. And the US is also saying the same thing. Taiwan is non-negotiable. What does uh, that mean? We, you you you're not going to take you're not going to do what you're, you're, you're planning to do. So you both both have uh, re- become rigid in their yeah in their uh, and the recent event where U.S. Philippines and Japan have created that little trilateral there. I mean, oh, if you I see, believe, I believe they're having a, the, an exercise. Yes, sir. Now. Australia yes. has been thrown in. They're having an exercise, and uh, mm-hmm. they're. Uh, this man, who's that former ambassador in um, Russian, uh, American ambassador in uh, uh, Moscow, uh, Nicholas Burns. Bill Burns. Huh? Bill Burns, sir. Bill Burns, former head of the CIA, no, right? Nicholas Burns, Kanata. Uh, Nicholas Burns. He was handling uh, India Park. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. He made a statement that. The shoal, one of the shoals under under discussion of claim is Philippine, according to the Admins, uh, Arbitration Council. Yeah. Now, the Arbitration Council is not the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice has not made any commitment on this. So Burns is saying it is, it is. You know, misleading, but it's it's belongs to the Filipinos, and we should ensure that they have that. And uh, in in, uh, in recent times, I think they've also made a statement asserting with the to the Philippines that we are on your side. Yeah. What are they trying? Are they sort of moving from Ukraine, Pali Ukraine, to uh, Hamas, Iran? And now you want to do this. Yeah. I mean, is is does this mean that chaos is a strategy? 
you want to throw everything uh, uh, under the bus you know, uh, under the the bus. Karto, muddy the yeah. waters you know it's been going on for quite some time this you first yeah. cancel your treaties your uh, uh, cooperation agreements time from i think it started off even even during reagan's time but they were really loud in trump's time mm-hmm. cancel a lot of treaties and they would you know then you had the pandemic you had the economic crisis you had a shipping crisis you have ukraine you have hamas israel and now philippines china us is growing up ek sol bhoni and you started another one they conducting an exercise they said that we have a mutual defense treaty we will abide mm-hmm. by it and social media refers to uh, an imminent attack by the chinese on the uh, second thomas attack second thomas uh, show yeah so where are where are the headache and i and i think that even now iran is still a very important factor in the middle east so let's let's finish that first we we'll go over the other one that you want to yes sir so chaos ho gaya strategy ka <clears throat> but has world war 2 ended technically no sir russia and japan are still at war they have not had a ceasefire agreement yeah that is because they haven't signed a peace treaty okay <laughs> because of some islands okay but look look at the way we have been fighting yeah you you had 1950 you had korea then you had yes. vietnam then you had the arab israeli wars then you had the afghan jihad and the balkans the afghan afghanistan twice uh, iraq twice syria libya yemen the surrogate wars of africa angola mozambique namibia algeria Ethiopia, Chad, yeah the entire oh, sahel belt what what is now it is again blowing up so you know it took 37 days after the assassination of archduke ferdinand 1914 for the world to go on a world war mercifully i think it's the nuclear deterrent that prevents similar actions now if there's any use of the nuclear bomb this is it you go ahead and assassinate uh, the leader of the islamic republic and guards and nothing happens you know? so this these are things that are happening and now the other thing is that us is no longer able to it it has the military power to destroy it has this means to invade it has 800 odd bases it has divided the world into commands as if it is private possession but you can't no longer stop around no everywhere dictating terms of international behavior those days are gone multipolarity is a new order which the russians are not, which the americans are not going to accept russians have their version of it the chinese have another one this means multipolarity means that they are the bosses that is what the multipolarity for the chinese mm-hmm. is but i don't know where it will and because i think this frustration over the years after second world war that the world to you was not becoming another america everybody wanted to be on its own and they thought that if everybody became like them there would be it'd be a peaceful world mm ours was the best now all these attacks that took place 78 days they bombed belgrade non stop how do you get good will out of that you don't do the serbs are going to forget or sections of the other communities and ukraine is a war which the americans brought they're pushing nato from 
the word go. And now they say Russia invaded uh, Ukraine. Well, technically, yes, but you pushed them to it. Yeah. They pushed them to it. They kept pushing and they did it. Putin kept telling them for years, don't do it. This is mm -hmm. a red line for me. And there are Americans who said, William Burt said it himself. It's a. a niet, niet, niet. Yeah. But they did it. So, what is it that drives America to do this? What is the fear? What are they going to lose? I just don't understand why they want to push and push and push. And so, they, they say India is a very inalienable part of the american foreign policy you know it's 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 very important for this thing and when you look at geography one can understand the the you know the the pakistani sold their so called strategic uh, location to the world yeah. for 30 40 years but the world kind of just didn't look at the country next door because that has a the best strategic location yeah uh, so you can't ignore geography so americans need to deal with us but my question to you is by doing this japan philippines thing is this like a plan a plus sort of a thing plan a is india india is not working out let's kind of okay you know look at something else to kind of counter china so okay japan philippines let's get all these guys together and create something over there it it is it is a kind of a situation dekho ek to election year hai ji whoever comes there it's their problem but Biden has to show some success somewhere. Now he can't. Ukraine is out. Now it's not done. Hamas is iffy. But I think it is too big a thing to take on China in this fashion. My own assessment is. That if there is a war between China and the United States in the Western Pacific, mm -hmm. the Chinese will win. Western Pacific. Just way. too far away to be fought. Mm -hmm. How many aircraft carriers, unless you are going to then start using missiles? And the country is too big. That's true. So how are you going to to populate the population as far as large? How are you going to control it? You could destroy it, maybe, but you can't win it. So this constant needling of China in aware that they are not going to change. And I think the Taiwanese also know that if something drastic happens, maybe, maybe the U.S. say, "Your problem, mate. I'm not coming." Quite possible. Quite, I, I think the, the 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 kind of behavior that comes out is is the same thing. It's not. Uh, in the past, also you name any country which they have said we will go and defend if it is in your interest. I might come if it is in my interest. So, is it in America's interest to defend Taiwan if it is uh, under attack? Not directly, sir. That's why I would hope they would create proxies and make them fight rather than fight themselves. Where will you get the proxies from? Do you think Southeast Asians will join? Do you think it's create an issue with Philippines? Is this is not Korea. Yeah. Fresh out of the yes, Second World War. Australian, New Zealanders, who else? Singapore? No. Japan, Philippines. Too little. Yeah. Probably a million men in total. No, you can't. You just can't win it. So are the Americans going to come? So these are, I think. They have to find a different solution for Taiwan.
two sovereign republics within the same system? I don't know. Not going to happen. So, but article you know, they... Three, uh, article 370 kind of situation. Yeah, Article 370 kind of situation. But they kind of put across India as their pristine partner. But then you have this whole narrative game. I mean, I'll give take a small example. Trudeau kept on saying India is interfering in the elections. And their committee has come out and said, no, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. The Chinese have been doing it. The Indians have done nothing. <laughs> so, if this was a lie, Niger is another lie. Yeah. Why do this? Why create antagonism in a relationship which is actually sincere? Yeah, and I don't understand why you badmouth India and you say that, you know, they are your chums. These kinds of things happen among friends. Yeah, it does happen among friends, but then the friends keep it quiet. They don't talk quiet. about it in public. And you and I or anybody, two friends can have difference of opinion and yeah, serious that's fine. Of opinion. But then they say, okay, we'll sort it out ourselves. We're not going to go to the bazaar and talk about it. Because they want to talk about it. They want to say it. Is it all the time just playing to the domestic gallery? Because... It, it doesn't matter how the Americans don't know where New York is. Yet. Yeah, they don't care. Mm. They don't care. It's their little town, their little hamburger and whatever, steak, quarter pound of steak, and stuff like that, basketball. I mean, I'm civilizing. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Nowadays is so weed and they, LGBT and... Uh, the number of people who can't point out what the State Department does is astonishing. For a superpower, they don't, they, people don't know what a State Department does or what it is, where is it. It's interesting. So, are they out of tune with the rest? And anybody can see that if you have to select a responsible partner who will have his interests in mind and, and join you, it's got to be us. Mm. But Americans determine their partnerships on the basis of interest, their interest, which can change. And one of the main um, rule, shall I say, that they have is that no regional power should become strong enough to oppose our interests in the region. They forgot that when China came up? Yeah, they forgot that. They helped China. Mm -hmm. They went with all these companies, they went there that we will help you become a democratic, free, liber liberal society. They said, thank you very much. We we'll give you what you want to give us. The system of our eye. And we will now steal technology from you. We will buy your technology and use it. They outsmarted them. I would become a member of the WTO. Do this, do that. You are the best guys around. When Nixon went to meet Mao, it was the height of Cold War. He was patching up with China to deal with Russia, Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having started that, they just kept quiet for a long time till Deng came. And he opened out before uh, socialization or whatever yeah. they call That's when they started moving in. And it became big time after some time. And everybody is, uh, is out there. Now suddenly you want to close all that. Globalization is to go backwards. You want to bring manufacturing back to your country. You've got to have uh, the shipping lanes are clogged. You know, after, after COVID, everything shut down. Yep. The ships also shut down. Then they became a backlog of ships stranded elsewhere in the wrong place and it's snowballed. Now to unravel this is taking time. 
plus you got this problem of the red sea under houthi uh, uh, not dominance but liable to be attacked suez canal is a is there for a bottleneck gibraltar is a bottleneck bosphorus is a bottleneck sharm el sheikh creates another bottleneck you have to go around south africa which means you had another 3 to 4000 yep. nautical miles to your journey mm-hmm. prices will go up rates will go up it will be slower so how are you going to revive economies how does i don't know whether we have started how we are going to handle this if it continues unless yes, we true. say that all our production is domestic and all our consumption is domestic of substantial otherwise if you going to export like the chinese became an export dependent country how are we going to handle that so when the us looks at india china you know recent mm-hmm. statements that came out from us on arunachal am good fair enough you support us Uh, why don't you say the same thing about Gilgit Baltistan, POJK, Baksai Chin? Pakistan is the counter to India. India is the counter to China. China was a counter to Russia. This is the linear thinking, you know. Yes. Yeah. You got to have these Pakis on our side to keep this damn Indian thing. now afghanistan is a counter to pakistan <laughs> exactly now is iran a counter to israel i don't know one wonders sir one wonders you know they did all those color revolution and they did the arab spring and then they went around bumping off uh, the old uh, muammar gaddafi and uh, saddam hussein for something he hadn't done so yeah, yeah that's what i'm saying the ability to destroy remember madeline albright's famous statement when she was asked at an that 16 minute interview that 50000 children died in the attack was it worth it she paused for a moment and said yes it was worth it and then we get lectures on liberal like yeah. uh, human humanity yeah. so, so you also had hillary clinton who came out and said about gaddafi we came and he died yeah and gave, and laughed laughed and if we want to take out a pannu we have a problem <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> Anu, who's, who's listed as a terrorist? Listed as a terrorist. And they say he's got free speech. Yeah. So he can say what he likes. He can say that I'm bombing. I I don't know. Smita Prakash didn't take it up very properly. If he would have said that, I would have quoted their own uh, Senate hearings when one of their senators took out the 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 presidents of these Ivy League colleges and said. What do you mean when the free speech will turn into action? What are you waiting for? And that was the whole thing. They kept saying death to the Jews, and that was free speech. But these two presidents lost their job because of this exact thing. This thing should have been pressed with the American ambassador. That when it happens inside your country, your Senate sits down and they take out the president of Harvard, no less, Claudine Gay. Yeah. on a similar thing exact same thing as a matter of fact and here is another guy doing the same thing just because it's us it's free speech but i think i do think that smita did raise these kinds of questions she like did that. but she didn't pursue the harvard angle yeah but i guess uh, yeah yeah i i could understand that but you know when you when you're watching you're like hey come on she could have said that <laughs> give, give it another one <laughs> give it another one uh <laughs> So, but, but then, when we, but do, where, how did the Times of India cover it the next day or the day after? They merely quoted what the ambassador had said. Said that's it. 
not the question that were that he fudged over. I mean, anyway. it's right. So when we look at uh, the America, if we look at no uh, America, we've discussed that you've said it's a, it's like a leverage war or a counter to China. Uh, when we look at China, you know, and uh, all we've been telling them is sort out the border and let's work. There's no problem. Yeah, we don't have animosity or anything of that sort. But the longer this damn thing goes on, the animosity will build, and that's something I think Mr. Jayashankar has been very clear in that. And when you see some writings from CSIS, their, 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 you know, their uh, CICIR and mm. their Shanghai Institute of Strategic Studies, some of the writings had hinted towards the fact that are we making a mistake with India because we've opened up another front for us, which we mm. don't need right now. So is there, do you think that the Chinese are kind of realizing that we can't sustain this for a long time? But having said that, the megalomaniac that sits there on the chair would never let that happen. So it's advantage USA who will keep putting oil into the fire. How do you, you know? I don't think the foreign policy, I suppose, is made by numero uno of them. He has decided that India has to be fixed. Hmm. And they're not going to. You might keep writing about these things. It's not going to. I don't think there is any basic change likely so long as the present dispensation is there. So you, you agree with the factor that the hawks run the show in China? It's not yeah. the doves. No. Why agree. is this why is this an understanding amongst the world that you know, oh no, 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 there are these fringe elements in China who are so radical. Why don't people come out and say it's the hawks because that run we, China? We we want to write a narrative that suits us. The narrative is that, you know, we should make peace, we should do this and that and the other to be friendly with the United States, with, with, with China. Therefore, you, you uh, cherry-pick a few issues and talk about them. But when you look at how the American Chinese are acting on the ground, they've taken Maldives. Maldives went and sat in their lap, whatever. Yeah. But it is it is a setback for us. It is what it is, yes, sir. So why do they have they ever made any gesture that suggests okay uh, we let you become a member of this, that and the other? No. Nope. We were quite keen that they become member of the WTO and all that. They don't reciprocate anything and they have no intent. Ariyar, when he had come to uh, to his visit and he was in uh, Ahmedabad, we had that uh, famous... Galwan. Uh, sorry. No. Dolam. 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 Uh, they, they, the troops entered, stayed on for a long time, even after Xi Jinping went back. That was no coincidence. I call it the SOP. Like this happening when your president is visiting another country must have had an okay from somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not a local commander doing it. So these are indications of how they are going to treat you. And we don't have to go to war, but we have to treat them alike. So we have the US putting out a narrative which is staunchly anti-China. China is the root cause of all problems. China is supporting Iran. China is supporting uh, Russia. Janet Yellen in her visit recently came out and said, if you support Russians even further, we uh, will sanction you. Uh, now, the narrative is that. Uh, but the back end is that the American businessmen go and meet Xi Jinping. Exactly. They mine him. Dine yeah. in. Only recently they had a big meeting where yeah. people, uh, all the all the big shots of the CEOs of that yeah. meeting, Bloomberg and uh, Black Black not Blackrock Blackrock Blackstone went so Blackrock didn't go. These guys were there in that meeting. So the question I'm asking you is on one part is this: although the CEOs came back and were very critical about what happened in China, they're like. 
this guy is not opening up this guy is centralizing we don't this and that but the attempt was to kind of reinvest in china they think that that is still their route for economic sal- salvation not us so coming towards the end of uh, this wonderful session so what do you think should be our policy to one handle the west because i i it, it was so interesting when mr kejriwal went in after a long time i actually saw the minion the european minion which is germany i call it the european minion because they've coordinated the foreign policy for ages everybody was very surprised and i wasn't and i said he also he also that. made some he also made some statement uh, yeah and funny thing is the people who people who were backing those statements you know the people who made those statements the journalists in question and all that god sakes they had such terrible reputations one chap was a bangladeshi literally a yeah. math member and another chap was a i mean a soros you know that that whole gang he was a to to ikatthe they they select the uh, journalists they want to call for that yeah. kind of so you got Allah this mock-up. and if you look at even the 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 pannu wala case which is filed in uh, filed in new york uh, the advocate who has filed it is done a fellowship in the soros uh, yeah, institute yeah 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 so it's connected now why do they do, i mean why do they use the same minions the same these things do, do they not think that we are smart enough to figure this out maybe they do but maybe they don't have any many many more soros around to help them do it i mean that way they find the chinese more innovative yeah they they use different methods they'll try something new yeah. they they don't understand our culture so that's where they kind of fall flat in terms of their complete narrative they're not able to close the loop so if you watch their narrative very carefully you'll realize they made a mistake but the americans are like it takes half an hour to bust it so uh, is it because of arrogance is it because of i think i think it's it's become routine now and this mm-hmm. arrogance and laziness kind of thing is set in here yeah. uh, come on man it's okay it sounds good let it run but they don't understand us they don't understand us and that is the fear when they talk about majority in it hindu this and that they don't understand the new world order will be centered on three countries sir yeah. the americans us and the chinese i mean the russians do feature in it but because of their economic issues they don't come out to be that stronger player they'll be like saudi arabia a not derogatory but a second level country uh the first three tiers is going to be these three countries and they yeah. got to sit down together and do stuff do you think we'll come at a point of time where the leaders of these three nations will sit down and say listen we can't do this anymore let's sit down and talk you know uh, adi the fear is two asian giants sitting together population of 2.5 or 2.8 huh? both huge armies nuclear weapons markets these two guys are going to compete with us the americans and the west for resources mm. and markets keep them fighting so how do you see them allowing this to no i have to say if russia india china got together one day it will be the largest mm. land mass in the globe with all the resources that you need oil and gas minerals for that won't happen either mm-hmm. yet all it takes is three statesmen to do it yep we don't have that. we have maybe one the others are what's it Oh yeah, that man first. Who is first? Hmm. Hmm. So My last question to you, sir. Yeah. Give me solutions. I mean, one of the biggest things would be information warfare, narratives, yeah, 
and stuff like that what would you like us to do or what would you advise if some mr modi calls you up and says mr sood please come and tell me what should i do in the third term to handle this we are reactive we go on the back foot and hit a six we yeah. always do that that's fantastic i love it but how about getting on to the front foot and going no we have to what could you recommend anticipate and act not as you say reactive se nahi chalta baat actually they want you to react because it gives uh, you know it it sells the story longer indian angrily reported because that and the other we should let that be if they made a statement in washington let it be but hum log to you know we uh, the ukraine war was covered in indian press only through western sources we had sadly no, yes. no input from anywhere else there a routine little bit somewhere the other but the whole page was cnn writers afp so on so forth. new york times you get yeah. one version you not getting the second version at all so we have to have our own voice it has to be loud it has to be repetitive it has to be multi it has to be private not double government gets this uh, stamped as a propaganda so it has got to be us guys like you and i who write stories who write interest stories who, who, who. how many of us actually watch america beyond uh, beyond the fifth avenue and central park and Lincoln Memorial and so on. So That's a good point. How many of us actually study America? That that is the country that has the power, still the power, to do you great harm and do you great good. So yeah, Pakistan is okay. I bloody knew something about handle. That's an interesting point. We need to start studying America from there within, so we can yes. create our own narratives. Yes, out of nothing, not of enmity, of curiosity. How does it work? What makes it tick? How did it become great? How many of us have studied Carnegie and Ford and Rockefeller and Morgan? How they built the system? They built mm-hmm. America: railroads and oil and shipping. It wasn't the government that did it. Correct. How have they done it? And why are they in this situation today, when you can't find a suitable man to be your president? Both sides, yeah. So, why, where, did the, where, and how did the fault come? Did you get another? Can you get another Rockefeller, another Roosevelt, or another Kennedy? Kennedy. And why were the Kennedys killed? <laughs> As it is, huh? <laughs> these are these are things we have not studied. Yeah. He said they are damn good. They are very good. Of course, they are good. They are very good at whatever. They are rich. But there, there are issues. Mm. How did they get wealthy? Where did the wealth come? The wealth gives you power. Power gives you wealth, and it goes around in circles. Then what happens? Then it suddenly starts to crumble. Because when philanthropy is for profits, and you fight wars on narratives, not ideals, then you are in for a high jump. Trust me, sir. You give me a lot to think about because I keep 
thinking about the fact that we need to know our enemies and know our adversaries and know so know this thing know the other side a little better yeah and how they tick you kind of hit the spot and you've given me a lot to think about as usual sir it's an awesome time awesome conversation i always enjoy talking to you and the next time we have a conversation sir is going to be face to face i'm going yeah. to come down there and i'm it, the next time we have a conversation is going to be face to face because okay. i'm also getting up a couple of stuff which i i would love to do a face to face podcast with you and learn a little more because the reason i i keep bugging you is because of your experience and people like you can pass on a lot to us so that we become wise to make the mis- don't so that we don't make the mistakes that you know we've made in history and uh, we we are wise enough to kind of read situations as they are on that note sir thank you so much as a present generation like yours is very very much more active thank you you know a lot a lot more than we did at that stage but it's good as long as we have this there is great hope for the country thank you sir thank you bye See you next time See thank you, you. take care